Good morning everyone. Today I am going to answer the question what are the six building blocks of life? Six building blocks of life are carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, phosphorus and sulfur. Carbon is the universal building block of life. It has ability to form very long chains of interconnecting carbon-carbon bonds. This property allows carbon to form backbone of organic compounds that is nothing but carbon containing compounds. When combined with oxygen and hydrogen, carbon has the exceptional ability to bind with wide range of other elements. Carbon uses four available electrons to form coal and chemical bonds, allowing carbon to form multiple stable bonds with other atoms such as hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen. Carbon can form many group of an important biological compounds including carbohydrates and sugars, lignin that is found in plants, chitins, alcohols, lipids and fats that is nothing but triglycerides and carotenoids. With nitrogen, carbon forms alkaloids and with addition of sulfur and in addition to nitrogen it forms amino acids which bind together to form proteins, antibiotics and other rubber products. With addition to phosphorus, carbon forms nucleotides which bond into another nucleic acids such as DNA, RNA and adenosine triphosphate that is ATP known as energy currency of cells. Coming to the next element that is nitrogen. Nitrogen is an essential element of life. Amino acids which are building blocks of proteins contain nitrogen as NH2 the amino part of the molecule. The four building blocks of DNA that is nothing but adenine a, cytosine denoted by C, guanine denoted by G, and thymine denoted by T. Consist of a single or double rings of carbon and nitrogen atoms with various side chains. Nitric oxide is a neurotransmitter. All living organisms require large amounts of nitrogen, however in the form of nitrogen N2, nitrogen is unusable by all living organisms except for a few primitive bacteria that are capable of converting nitrogen that is N2 into ammonia. This process of conversion is called nitrogen fixation and makes the nitrogen available for use. In the atmosphere, nitrogen is fixed in three ways that is by bacteria, second is by humans through a manufacturing process called Haber's process used in fertilization production and also through a chemical process initiated by lighting. Now coming to uh, the next element that is <coughs> oxygen. Oxygen is a basic requirement of most organisms. Although there are some organisms that can grow in or even require environments without oxygen while others can tolerate very low levels of oxygen. Organisms spend their entire life in water to breathe oxygen that is dissolved in water. Coming to the next element that is hydrogen. Hydrogen is an important element and exists in the form of water. Although hydrogen is the lightest element and has atomic number one, it doesn't have lowest melting and boiling points. Hydrogen is used in the Haber's process to fix nitrogen from the air and produce ammonia. Hydrogen is widely used as a fuel as is present in all organic compounds including coal, natural gas and oil. Coming to the next element that is phosphorus. Phosphorus is the essential element which is contained in many cellular compounds such as DNA and the energy carrier ATP that is adenosine triphosphate. All life needs phosphorus and agriculture yields are improved when phosphorus is added to growing plants and also the diet of livestock. Consequently, it is used globally as a fertilizer and plays an important role in meeting the world's food requirement. In nature, phosphorus only exists bound to oxygen which is called phosphate. Chemists can remove the oxygen bound to it to get elemental white phosphorus which glows in the dark. 
Phosphate easily diffuses through soil and water and can be taken up by cells. When phosphate meets free calcium and iron, they combine to give highly insoluble salts. Guano, that is a large accumulation of bird droppings, also contains high concentration of phosphorus and was used to fertilize crops. In addition to these inorganic forms, phosphate is also converted to cellular compounds creating organic bone phosphorus such as phospholipids or phytate. Agricultural soils are usually rich in inorganic phosphorus while an undisturbed ecosystem such as forest or long-term pastures organically bound phosphorus dominates. But in agricultural land is often depleted of phosphorus during harvest and land management practices such as plowing. His addition of phosphate containing fertilizers is required. Spreading manual and avoiding tillage are ways of increasing microbial abundance in the soil and keeping more phosphorus in organically bound form. To the coming back to the next chairman that is sulfur. All living beings need sulfur. It is especially important for humans because it is a part of the amino acid methionine which is absolute dietary requirement for us. The amino acid cysteine also contains sulfur. The average person takes in around 900 mg of sulfur per day mainly in the form of protein. Elemental sulfur is non-toxic but many sulfur derivatives are such as sulfur dioxide and hydrogen sulfide. Sulfur can be found commonly in nature as sulfides. During several processes, sulfur bonds are added to the environment that are damaging to animals as well as humans. These damaging sulfur bonds are also shaped in nature during various reactions. Mostly when substances are not naturally present, have to be added. They are unwanted because of their unpleasant smells and often are highly toxic. Globally, sulfuric substances can have the following effects on human health. Neurological effects and behavioral changes, disturbance of blood circulation, heart damage, effects on eyes and eyesight, reproductive failure, damage to immune systems, stomach and gastrointestinal disorders, damage to liver and kidney functions, hearing defects, disturbance of hormonal disturbance, dermatological defects, suffocation and lung embolism. It is the end of the question. I hope I have answered the question well. If you have any doubts or queries, you can get back to me. I can prepare another slide. Thank you.